in a time of year when people are thinking about like restarting, should people be scribbling things down on pieces of paper? I want to change this, I want to change this, I want a new job. This is a moment where the window of opportunity is open. We do know empirically that people are more likely to follow through on new plans when they're at a reset point during the year. And so the new year is an ideal moment where you feel like, okay, I haven't blown my resolution yet. Right? So there's, a, there's still a chance that I could follow through on that commitment. You're reminding me of um, my diving coach, Eric Best. I had a terrible time as a springboard diver motivating myself to try new dives. I would stand at the end of the board shaking and my teammates would get annoyed and Eric was very patient. And one day I was just standing there not willing to go. And he asked me, he said, Adam, are you going to do this dive? And I remember responding, ever? Yes, of course, one day I will do this dive. <laughs> and he said, great, then what are you waiting for? And I have heard that voice in my head every time I have hesitated to try something new or make a change. And I would ask that question to anyone, what are you waiting for? Wow, is that a book? Is that a next book? It could be. Right. Are you, do you want to write it? <laughs> is it important for us to have goals? I don't want to abandon goal setting, but I think we need to be thoughtful about what goals we set and at what expense. There's extensive evidence that if you set difficult, specific goals, you will work harder and smarter and you will be more likely to achieve those goals. The danger is you might not like what you got. <laughs> One of the dark sides of goal setting is it leads to tunnel vision. And sometimes the goal that you thought you wanted stops you from pursuing the one that was much more important. And I, I think we need to be cautious. Joy waxes and wanes. Values last. Who you want to be is going to be heavily shaped by what you think is important. And that means that if you need a foundation to make decisions from, having a sense of what matters to you, what do you think really counts in life, is a pretty decent place to start. I follow you on social media and I listen to your podcast. So much of the message is just being nice or treat the people around you in a better way as having all kinds of positive effects. You shouldn't need science to tell people that, right? But I think where the science gets really exciting is I've stumbled into all these interesting nuances that I didn't see before. People often talk about being nice and being kind um, as interchangeable. They are not. Being nice is making people feel good today. Being kind is doing what's gonna help them do better tomorrow. And when people think about being nice, they shy away from having difficult conversations. They don't tell people hard truths. But it doesn't come without risk. It's a real test of a relationship, right? When you tell someone something that they need to hear, in your view, but do not want to hear. It's, it's like a high wire act sometimes, it feels like to me, because you just feel like, well, here's the status quo, and we can live with the status quo versus facing up to some unfortunate truth. I think that's accurate. I also think if you reflect on the moments where people did the most good for you, I am willing to bet you, Harry, that not all of those moments made you feel good in the moment. But you sure appreciated that they happened. 100%. And don't you want to pay that forward then? Totally. Along those lines, what's the power of thank you? That a little thanks literally goes a long way. When you show gratitude to somebody, you're actually motivating them to be kinder to other people and pay it forward, which is kind of exciting. And there's some brand new research uh, showing that it actually strengthens us physiologically. We are more resilient after being appreciated. When people feel valued, when they feel that they matter, that energizes them in all sorts of ways. That was great. So the million reasons you want to just listen to this guy and hang out with him forever. And oh, why, by the way, he has a podcast. He has a mm. newsletter you can sign up for. Okay. You probably can't get into his class at Wharton. We shot that story. We shot that story at Penn. That's I know. Really I Chanel could. Chanel I could. Chanel Chanel I could. Was. Franklin. I'm yeah, sitting right. there listening yeah. to you guys it's talking. It's interesting of... because it's stuff that we've maybe heard before that makes sense, but in, mm -hmm. a, in a different way. The nice, kind connection. It's, it's oh, what fascinating. The stuff he talks about is based on data. Mm -hmm. He's talking about, well, we've done studies about this. We know that, for instance, when you say thank you and somebody appreciates it, in the end of the day, that makes you more apt to be more grateful mm. to other people that mm. all this stuff, we pass it around mm. and then it starts to come uh, back. Yeah. It might be based in data, but the anecdotes were so relatable when he's talking about diving and saying, are you ever going to do this? He said, yeah. He goes, well, then what are you waiting for? Right? What are you waiting for? I love that story. We're inspired now. Thank you, Harry. Great, Harry. Thank you. I got to go write a book. Happy I year. know, right? Exactly. <laughs> what are you waiting for? I love that. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.